people over here, over there, because heaven forbid we block out uh, Sam Manuel. And that's not all. Earth Bonds is the greatest producer. Pauly Shore working him now to I'm see if he can get some uh, okay. movie deals. Uh, there's a lot I happening here. Pauly was at the debate. He's going to talk to us about that. Irvin has made the most important things in all of Hollywood, and these guys can talk about whatever they like. Uh, we'll go back to you. <laughs> Plus, he has created some of the scariest movies ever. We are live with the executive producer and creator of the Halloween movies. Oh, this is a heavy name, and you'll know it. America loves horror movies. We have, well, one of the godfathers of horror movies and a lot more with us. Erwin Yablons, the executive producer, creator of some of the first mainstream horror movies and independent movies, including the hugely popular Halloween series. Nice to see you've written a book. It's really good to have you here. Here's the thing. You make the movie, it is a huge gamble. When did you know the gamble paid off? The first time I saw it with a paying audience and they were screaming and hollering and carrying on and just yelling at the screen. I thought, they don't like it, but they did like it. They were just, <laughs> they were, they were, they were just relieving all the tension. You know, I wanted to distribute this through a major company because we had made this independently for about $300,000. Mm -hmm. A brilliant young director by the name of John Carpenter. This was his first real movie. Right. Interestingly enough, the major studios never sent anybody to cover it. That's how they were thinking in those days. So I went out and I had to distribute it myself. But the reaction of that audience, I have never, I say in the book, it was a visceral response and, and, and an, it was like breaching the fourth wall. It was, it was the kind of uh, involvement I've never seen before or since. In order. And by the way, we're opening again in a thousand theaters theatrically. October 25th. That, if you'd have told me that 35 years ago, I, I just would not have believed it. Why do we love being scared so much in the movies? I have a theory about that, too. First of all, it's a controlled thrill. Think about this. Okay. You go into a movie theater, you know you're subjecting yourself to a horrible experience, but you're in control. You Anytime it gets too intense, eyes, right. you can open your eyes, you can talk to your partner, you can jump in your partner's sure. lap, <laughs> or you can just leave. Right. So you measure out how much of this intensity you're you willing know, to take. That's what we tell people who watch the show here. You watch as much as you can take <laughs> until you can't take it anymore. That's, yeah. it, that's the whole thing. Here's, Hollywood has changed a lot since you started. You've worked as a studio exec. Do you like where it is now, or are you glad you were in the business when you were in the business? <laughs> well, I'm glad I was in the business when I was in the business, and uh, it's for young people. Mm. I think it's a young people's business. The, the energy and the, and the creativity that I needed to make these kinds of things happen, I don't possess anymore. I, 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 I still love to watch movies, and I, but I'm an old curmudgeon now, and I make fun of some of the movies that are made. But hey, audiences respond, and they like it. I'm not fond of the horror films today. They're a little bit too sadomasochistic. Right, I think so too. Because I, I want to stress something about this movie, Halloween. In the book, I talk a lot about this. This was theater of the mind. I, was, I grew up on radio. I was the last of the radio right. generation. Mm -hmm. Inner sanctum, lights out. I pull the covers over my head. And the theater of the mind, what, what I conjured up in my head, was infinitely more frightening than anything anybody could do. <laughs> right, right, right. So my instructions to John Carpenter, who was a brilliant filmmaker and understood it completely, John, no gore, no blood. I want a pop and a scare every 10 minutes methodically. Take him to the right, scare him on the left. But, and he understood that perfectly, and he just performed brilliantly. Wow. When I saw the movie for the first time, though, in a, in a, in a lock without music, it was good, but... Something was missing. That music always Isn't brings it, it along. You know when what? He, what the, that music. Right. That iconic music. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it Hollywood, though, come sort of full circle in a way? Because a very sharp, smart, talented kid now with an HD camera and a laptop computer can actually make a movie for a small budget. Precisely. As a matter of fact, I say to myself all the time, you know, it's really easier to make a low-budget picture than when you did it. Because we had to use Panavision and all those yeah, lights yeah, and things. Yeah, yeah. And I wish I had about 20 years less on me. Uh, <laughs> I'd go out there with that little HD thing and I I'd film it. Oh, I, I think right. you're younger than you think. You want to meet <laughs> her when you can. This is a real rags to riches story, too, which he tells us yeah, well, uh, Signing story. books at uh, Dark Delicacies in Burbank. Meet him tonight at 7 o'clock. And you can get this on Amazon. Amazon. Look at the screen. Cool. The man who <laughs> created Halloween is available at Amazon.com as well. So nice to see you. Thanks so much I for like coming I like the name in. of the place you're going. You. Dark, Dark Delicacies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. Irwin, a real pleasure to have you with us. Nice to see you. Still ahead.